everyone and greetings from Australia. My name is Ruth and I am an Australian registered migration agent. I'm also a solicitor of, uh, or lawyer of the Supreme and High Court of Australia. Well, today I would like to share with you information about labour agreement, which may sound mysterious um, to some of us. I note that the information in this video is not to be treated as legal advice, uh, but it will give you vital information concerning labour agreement. Now, some of you might be familiar with the temporary work visa um, and usually for these visas, an Australian business must first go through two applications, namely um, to be a standard business sponsor uh, and then they can nominate an overseas worker um, to fill the position if they can prove and show the Australian government that they have been struggling and cannot fill that position with local workers. So after the two processes, um, a visa applicant then will be eligible to lodge a visa application for a work visa. So labour agreements are actually a form of work-sponsored visa with concessions to the usual stringent requirements for business sponsors. So it can be a little bit more flexible. This can include occupations that are not usually on the list for work visas or if it's non-existent in ENSCO. At times, it may include concessions for English requirement, skills, salaries, etc. For those who have held a temporary work visa, you may be familiar with the previous subclass 457 visa. And you would have also heard that the subclass 457 visa um, has been replaced with TSS visa, which is also called the subclass 482 visa which has essentially reduced uh, the type of occupations allowed for sponsorship and even pathways to permanent residency. However, at the same time, the number of labour agreements in which um, the uh, Department of Home Affairs of Australia has um, agreed to has actually increased. For example, um, in uh, the area of advertising, in horticulture, um, aged care providers under the company-specific labour agreement stream. Um, plus, some of you would also have heard of the DAMA program, which is Designated Area Migration Program, um, with particular states and certain locations. So it appears that the Australian government is actually quite willing to consider special requests that do not necessarily fall under the usual visa types. Now, of course, an Australian employer must show that there is a genuine and real need for a skilled worker and are unable to fill the position with local market. Now, with this uncharted territory where, you know, no one has ever been to, well, we can only try to put forward the most persuasive argument and the most persuasive case possible. So if you are in a position where your occupation or you have a business and you need someone um, to work for you um, and that occupation or that job title is not on the usual list, um, feel free to contact us um, because we might be able to come up with a creative plan um, and also uh, design a persuasive argument um, for your business um, to negotiate with the Department of Home Affairs and you might just um, find that uh, if you are approved, then you will have the opportunity to maintain and grow your business. Now, the information in this video is not to be treated as legal advice. It is general information only. If you need help, please do not hesitate to contact us on the email address below and we will be very happy to assist you. Thank you and we wish you the very best.